Welcome back, networking enthusiasts. Today we'll cover source network address translation in NFTables. I will tell you about masquerade, regular NAT, one-to-one -one mapping, NAT pooling, and balancing the source address. My name is Philip. Let's get started. First, we need to understand what network address translation is and what issues it solves. Starting from the most basic use case, we have the following network topology. There is a 192.168.10 slash 24 network that we call the private network and 192.168.12 slash 24 that we call the public network. For simplicity, I'm using two private IP ranges, but in real life scenario, you would see a public IP range on the right. In the middle, we have our NFTables firewall connected to both networks. On the inside, we have two client machines, client one and client two, attached to the private network with 10.231 and 10.232 IPs respectively. On the outside, we have two servers, server one and server two, attached to the public network with 12.231 and 12.232 IPs. Both servers are running HTTP service. This mimics our home network connected to the internet. Of course, it's simplified as our public network consists only of a single network. In real life, there will be hundreds of thousands of public networks interconnected with each other forming the internet. Let me log into our client one machine and try calling HTTP service on server one. It does not work. Why is that? The target server is not on the local network. If we check the routing table, we'll find that the packets will go to the default gateway. That is our firewall. That's to be expected. Let's check if we have connectivity to the firewall. Of course we have, we are on the same subnet. Let's go to the firewall and see if we can reach the target server from there. This works as the firewall is connected to the public network. Just in case, let's see if the packet forwarding is enabled on the firewall. Okay, it's there. Let's also check any firewall rules that might be blocking the traffic. The rule list is empty. Nothing is blocking the traffic. So the client can reach the firewall and the firewall can reach the server. So why is it not working? The issue we are facing is about return traffic. If we look at the target server routing table, we'll discover that the target server knows nothing about our 192.168.10 network. It's only familiar with its public network. If we would add the routing to 192.168.10/24 that points back to the firewall and rerun the test from the client, all would start working. Unfortunately, there are a few issues with that approach. First of all, in real life, you don't have access to the remote server on the public network to add a route pointing back to your network. You may say, it does not work like that. In real life, I advertise the network via BGP and everyone knows about it. Yes, I agree, but we are at home. We are not an ISP with its own autonomous system. There is yet one more issue that's preventing the traffic from flowing back to our server. 10.0.0.0/8, 172.16.0.0/12, and 192.168.0.0/16 uh, that our network belongs to are considered private networks and are not routable over the internet. In other words, every internet service provider will block any traffic to or from such networks. The way to work around it is called Source Network Address Translation or SNAT for short. Basically, we can configure our firewall to substitute the source address of the packets going out to the public network with its own IP address, so that when the target server gets the packet, it will see the packet coming from the firewall and will know how to reply back. Just to visualize that, our packet has 192.168.10.231 as the source and 192.168.12.231 as the destination. Because the target IP is not on our network, 
it will go to the default gateway, that's our firewall. Here the firewall will perform source NAT by replacing the source IP with the IP of the outgoing interface. In our case, the packet will be leaving via ETH0, so the source IP will be updated with 192.168.12.230. This also will create an entry in the connection tracking table that includes information about the connection, such as the source and destination IP address, source and destination ports, protocol type and NAT binding, that is association of the private IP address and port of the internal device with the corresponding public IP address and port for external communication. No rule lookup will be performed for subsequent packets in the flow as the NAT engine will use NAT binding information already set up by the first packet to perform the packet manipulation. Then the packet leaves the firewall and goes to the server. Server will reply back with the packet that has 192.168.12.231 as the source and 192.168.12.230 as the destination. The packet will reach the firewall where the destination IP will be set to the IP the packet originated from as it has the information in the connection tracking table. In our case, it's 192.168.10.231. Finally, the packet gets back to the client. Enough of the theory. Let's try to configure our basic source network address translation with NF tables that will allow our client to reach the server on the public network. First, let's create a chain and name it post routing. Of course, you can name it whatever you like, but we want it to be something meaningful. Now let's attach to the post routing hook as we want to manipulate the packet as it goes out after the routing decision has been made. In order to do that, let's specify the type of the hook as NAT, as we'll be doing address translation, as opposed to filter for packet filtering. The place where we want to attach is at the post routing hook. The priority will be SRC NAT. That's the default priority for source network address translation. We'll also set the default policy to accept. Setting the most basic source network address translation is as easy as specifying the outgoing interface name you want your firewall to perform source NAT, followed by masquerade keyword. This will cause the source IP of the packets going out via interface ETH0 that's the public interface, to be replaced with ETH0 IP. Please keep in mind that the masquerade is a special kind of NAT that can determine the IP of your outgoing interface. It's especially useful if your IP can change over time. So if you get your IP via DHCP, PPPoE, etc. That's the translation you should be using. Let's load the configuration enable live events on our connection tracking table and test the connection. It works. If we look at the logs of the target HTTP server, we can see the request come from firewall and not the client. If we look at what happened in the contract table, we can see there is a new entry with protocol set to TCP, that's six, and with time to leave 120 seconds where syn packets was sent from 10.231 source IP, that's our client, to 12.231 destination IP, that's our server. Unreplied means that we have not seen any return traffic. Next, there is information what we expect in return, that is source being the server and destination being the firewall. Ports are also reversed. If you look at the established event, we can see the source is the client, the destination is the server, but as the traffic leaves the firewall, the source IP is swapped, and the server will see the firewall outgoing IP as the traffic source. To organize the rules a bit, let's create a new chain and name it NAT underscore ETH0. This chain will perform our translation. Inside that chain, I will put a masquerade keyword. In the post routing chain, instead of performing the masquerade action, I will jump to NAT underscore ETH0 chain. Basically, the post routing chain will catch the traffic and split it by outgoing interface 
and the actual translation will happen further down the line in the dedicated chains. In more complex scenarios where you have multiple outgoing interfaces, it will make your configuration much more readable. Masquerade is useful for interfaces where IPs can change, but if you'd like to have more control over the source IP or your interface IP won't change, then you should perform a regular SNAT. To do that, I will replace the masquerade keyword with SNAT IP2 and provide the IP of the ETH0 interface. As the packet goes out, this rule will replace the source IP to the one provided in the rule. It's recommended to limit the packets that are translated only to specific private networks that need access. I'll do it by adding IP source address and then provide the 192.168.10/24 range. This will cause only traffic from the uh, .10 network to be translated. If the traffic comes from any other network, it won't be translated. Of course, you could be even more specific and say that you want only the traffic to port 80 to be translated, but it's better to nut all ports and then block on the filtering rule. Before we move further, let's reiterate what we know so far. Source network address translation allows a private network that is not routable over the internet to reach public networks. It also allows multiple clients to share a single public IP. It not only hides your internal network from the outside world, acting as a barrier between the internal network and external network, but also conserves precious public IP before address space. Source network address translation is also used in load balancing, but we'll talk about it in a separate video. If you are a home user, most likely you have a single public IP and often you even need to pay extra to keep it static. If, however, you are a small company, most likely you've been assigned more than one public IP. Let's see how to perform source address translation if you have multiple public IPs coming from the same range. Mind, it's not a dual VAN setup. We'll have a video on dual VAN on a different occasion. First, I will open the networking configuration of the server. I will add two more IPs to the ETH0, that's our public facing interface. Let's reload networking configuration. Our ETH interface has three IPs now. Why would you need more than one IP address for outgoing traffic? In TCP, the connection consists of source IP and source port, and destination IP and destination port. For every established connection, you use up one source port. With that said, theoretically, you can establish only around 65,000 TCP connections from a single IP. If you use source NAT, you share your public IP with all hosts sitting behind you. If we have 20 clients and every client establishes 3,000 connections, you are close to hitting the limit and running out of source ports. With multiple IPs, you can distribute the load among them. Let's open our configuration file. Instead of single IP, we can provide a range. It's called NAT pooling as the devices with a private network share a pool of IP addresses. Let's reload the configuration and test the connection from client one and also test the connection from client two. If we look at our server, we discover that the request came from two different IPs. The default behavior of SNAT pool is persistent. It will use the same IP for the same source destination combo. If we try the connection from client one, we'll see that we were assigned the same source address on the outgoing interface. Some protocols like FTPS don't like the client to come from different source IPs as it breaks the connection. You can also define a mapping called one-to-one -one NAT that for specific private IP assigns specific public IP. This is useful to assign a dedicated public IP to a server from a private network. Let's open our configuration file and define a map by adding source IP maps to, and here we define client one IP will map to 192.168.12.229 IP, client two IP will map to 
192.168.12.228 IP. Let's reload the configuration and test the connection from client 1. It got nutted to dot .229. Also, let's test the connection from client 2. It got nutted to dot .228. I will give you a sneak peek of a fantastic NF tables function called number generator. It's mostly used for load balancing, but can also be used for other purposes. In our first example, we'd like every connection to be nutted to a different IP in a round robin fashion. We'll use the number generator with the numgen keyword and put it in incremental mode with the INC keyword. Incremental means that every time we call the rule, the value will be incremented. Then we specify the mod keyword to set the upper boundary which won't be reached by the return numbers. I'll set it to 3. Our number generator will return values like 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2. Next, we specify the map where 0 is mapped to 12.228, 1 is mapped to 12.229, and 2 is mapped to 12.30. Every time the rule is triggered, it will not the IPs in sequence. Number generator returns 0, so the source IP will be mapped to 12.228. Number generator returns 1, so the source will be mapped to 229, and so on. 228, 229, 230, 228, 229, 230. Let's try that. I will reload the configuration and call the server from client 1. The connection was not at 228. Let's try that again from the same client. The connection was not at 229. And again, the connection was not at 230. Now it's back at 228. We can replace the incremental generator with a random one. This will cause the numbers to be between 0 and 2, but generated in a random manner. I will reload the configuration and call the server from client 1 few times. If we look at the server's log, we see the IP request is coming from is randomly chosen from the pool. With the limited availability of IPv4 addresses, NAT allows multiple devices on the local network to share a single public IP address. This is particularly important as the demand for IP addresses has far exceeded the initially available IP addresses. Next time, we'll discuss destination network address translation that allows you to redirect traffic coming from external networks to servers on the internal network. We'll also touch on load balancing with NF tables.